like to invite uh, Susan Warner and Melissa Shaw from the, or Melissa Shaw on her own, from the Collingwood Museum. <laughs> All right, so I'm Melissa Shaw. I'm the museum assistant at the Collingwood Museum. So this is our lovely building. We're very lucky. Our, our building was constructed in 1998 on the same site of a much smaller structure. And uh, while it is new, it does pose um, unique challenges. But uh, we're lucky uh, and happy to be here. It was designed in the spirit of Collingwood's uh, 1873 train station. And it's been estimated that we have about 60,000 pieces in the collection. Um, the exact breakdown of that we're still working on. We don't really know. That estimate was come to um, about a decade ago by a past curator, so we're not quite sure how that, those, that number was arrived at, but we have that. Um, we are municipally owned, and uh, we, the museum was uh, started in the 1960s to care for a collection that had been amassed by an organization called the Huron Institute that had been collecting for 60 years. And their, their mandate was, is very different than ours. While they did have a large number of wonderful photographs from Collingwood's past, they also had, um, they had a botany department, um, zoology, um, mineral. They had a lot of different things going that we unfortunately no longer collect. So one of our challenges that we'll get to is kind of um, working with that and determining how to go forward with those pieces in the collection. So this, oh, actually, I think somehow I just jumped a whole bunch of slides. It's, there's, there, oh, there should be a picture, but there's not. So I will paint the picture for you. <laughs> Um, so basically, we have uh, three storage rooms um, in our building, two, smallers, two smaller rooms that were equipped with a mobile storage system. One houses our small artifacts, another houses our archival collection. The third uh, area is the one that we're going to be focusing on for reorg, and we've estimated that there are approximately 4,200 pieces in it, and that includes an over, our oversized archival collection, textile collections, there are metals, woods, it's, very, it's a very diverse collection in that room. Um, when I was practicing last night, I was going over, so I did take out a lot of pictures, and I did take out our gallery photographs, which I apologize for. But we do have um, a relatively, it's not a large gallery, so we have a couple of permanent exhibits, one dealing with our shipbuilding past. Collingwood was very well known as a shipbuilding town. Also, our railway, we have um, permanent native, native exhibits on display, um, as well as um, railway. So I'm just going to jump to the picture that actually exists. And this was our large storage room before uh, reorganization. So this is what it looks like right now. And it looks very pretty with these colors. I can assure you it is not this pretty in real life. Um, so the green units represent our fixed metal shelving. Um, the blue items, um, which are mostly concentrated uh, in the lower areas, those are our non-collections. So there's a bookshelf that has books that we use for resource purpose, research purposes. Um, there's a large filing cabinet that has our research files. Those really should not be in there. Um, we also have um, stools, um, conservation supplies in here as well, just kind of all mixed in. What we've determined during um, our condition report is that we actually have quite a substantial textile collection that while well, we knew it was there, we didn't really appreciate how many pieces were there. And just in a cursory count, there are about 600 pieces. And um, at the top end there, you'll see that pur purple um, long rectangle with all of the colored hangers. That represents our rolled and hanging storage unit that um, kept coming up in our, store, in, our, in our condition report and is really one of our, most, uh, our items of most concern. And finally, we have um, four map cabinets um, that range in uh, material composition. And um, they're, they're very deep, and they're encouraging staff to, because we have nowhere else to put the items, to keep piling things on and on. And that's really becoming a problem for us. So the picture on your left is what, you greet, what greets you when you open um, the doors to storage. So again, non-collection items. There's that bookshelf with all of those uh, research materials. Um, the textiles that are they're rolled and hanging at the back there. There's also a full wall length uh, rod that um, is, is uh, supporting the weight of a lot of our hanging textiles. And um, we actually did have a, a 
a work bee with our volunteers and we did alleviate a lot of the weight. That rod is actually b permanently bowed because of the weight that was on it. Uh, but in taking things off that unit, we had to then box things and that's where you see the, the stacking happening with those gray textile boxes. On the right, um, again, you see our stacking issues, those bright, three bright blue boxes. Those have textiles in them that are really too large to be stored in those boxes. And again, there are items on the floor. Um, that sign is leaning against a cabinet, which is actually an artifact. Um, and again, that's where the boxes are piled, as well as the ship light. So we're, we're trying to use our space most efficiently, but we're really at a, a standstill with what we can do. So for our storage self-evaluation, as expected, we found that um, we were pretty much, we were, all of our um, findings were in that one line indicating that we needed a storage reorganization project. Our team members consist of Susan Warner, museum supervisor, myself, and our three casual staff. And um, basically, each week we have one of them for 12 hours. So we are gonna be relying on each one of them, but also volunteers and um, some of our committee members, hopefully. And even better, maybe some council members that we might be able to wrangle in. <laughs> so some of the great numbers that we came out of that were really helpful to make the case for our need for new furniture to councillors were these percentages. Also, they were very helpful in our map application. So we discovered that um, the units alone in our storage area were consisting, were taking up 57% of the floor space. Our, the average unit fullness was at 125%. Um, the height usage is at 75%. We still have a little bit higher we can go, it's just that our, our furniture right now isn't adequate for that. So overall we have 109% fullness in this storage room. Um, of the 4,200 items, estimated 4,200 items that are in here, 85% um, are accessioned, 12% are inventoried, and of the entire 4,200, we, we estimate that there's about 40% that really lack provenance. They came from that very early collection that we really, we don't have any of the documentation for, so while they are sometimes beautiful pieces, we don't really know what the connection is to Collingwood. And within, with the documentation spot check that we did, we discovered that 71% of our objects cannot be retrieved in three minutes. We cut our staff member off for morale reasons at 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> she, she was starting to lose it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in one of those searches, she was required to move 68 items. So <clears throat> that was the top end. And then in some instances, it was a matter of, oh, there it is. But 68 on the one end, and that was in our oversized document collection, which we also discovered was what we would save if there was a fire, so there's a problem there. So for the main issues, um, incomplete collections database entries, we were missing a lot of location information. Again, only 12% was um, designated as being in large storage, and it was just large storage. It didn't necessarily have a shelf or anything, just large storage. Um, we have quite a number of unaccessioned or mystery artifacts, again, composing about 40% of our storage. Um, our storage furniture and containers lack consistent label and formatting, also discovered by our poor document checker. Um, the labels were in different spots, the shelves are labeled differently, even the sequence of labeling is just completely erratic. This is a close-up of our hanging system, which um, we have been informed by the municipality we're not allowed to hang anything else on there because of um, the unknown weight capacity. Unsafe passageways on the picture on your left. There's, there's, our, there's, there's a chair on the floor, there's a stool, there's a vacuum cleaner, there's a table in the bottom right there. It's just that rack is ex incredibly inaccessible at the moment. And again, just inefficient storage shelving, placing items on the floor, and the stacking that's, that's happening. <clears throat> Here's a picture of our overcrowded archival collection. Um, and this is where those 68 pieces were, were pulled out to find one thing. Storage of similar collections is very challenging for us. Um, the picture on the right kind of details that. We have metal pieces sitting on wooden items, shipyard tools and slid underneath uh, something that belongs in more of the domestic collection. And the way that we're storing our framed artwork and photographs uh, really is unsafe as the vertical screening that we're using is not rated for, for, use, for use in that way. So that's something that we're, we're looking to replace as well. With the building, sometimes we find uh, shingles from the roof <laughs> around the building during a storm, after storms. Um, our building was constructed in 1990.
We've determined that less than 2% of the roof would be affected by this. It is something we flagged, but for right now, it's not um, of great priority, but we are gonna see if someone can get up on the roof and have a look for us to see what is actually happening up there. We do not have a fire suppression system, but we're currently looking into grants that uh, provide funding for that. Um, our accessible entrance, which is on the east side of our building, allows a lot of unbuffered air to come into the building, particularly in the, in the winter, you get really cold blasts. Um, unfortunately coming in and hitting um, a wooden boat, which is not very happy at the moment. And uh, we have no lunch room. Um, Susan and I work in a, building, or in a room that is the kitchen, staff room, break room, conservation room, research room, volunteer room. It's, it's basically everything. So we find that we're eating food in areas that often have artifacts. We have a partner organization in our museum um, that actually has an office right beside our large storage area and there is a door between the, the spaces, they cannot access it, but the increased risk of pest infestation is definitely there. Um, some of our doors and windows lack appropriate weather stripping. We have ice that inevitably makes its way into the building, <laughs> um, as indicated on the bottom left, and daylight coming through other creases in our doors. For the main issues with our furniture and small equipment, again, our rolled and hanging textile system is a massive problem. Um, some of the, the compositions of our shelving is unknown. We don't really know, like we have plywood shelving in some cases, our map cabinets are, and I don't know exactly if they're oak or what they are. Um, also some of the shelves lack adequate um, padding and some of them are not very stable, they're just makeshift at the moment. Also we lack an emergency response kit. And we, our, our largest metal shelving unit, um, you actually have to adjust that middle section in one go. So it's about nine feet in length, so you have to kind of strategically decide what height you want, and you can see where the arrows are. There's a lot of, a lot of wasted space there. Um, main, issues, main issues in management include um, an incomplete and unapproved emergency response plan. We've been told our fire department has a plan, but we don't know what that is. We don't know if the museum is included. <laughs> Um, we have a foundational collection that long, no longer meets the collecting mandate, mandate, and that again was the Huron Institute's collection. Uh, and we have no written documentation outlining um, the exact procedures for accessioning at the museum. We all know them, but they don't exist in writing. So the urgent priorities that we have identified to address immediately through our reorg project um, is the structural deficiencies of the hanging and rolled textile unit. Um, a lot of our large artifacts are on the floor. We're looking to get those up off the floor. Um, the storage of non-collections in large storage. Again, getting the research materials out and making it uh, a, safe, a safe area for those pieces. We have a lot of uh, staff are going in and out to find information on a regular basis in those rooms and volunteers. So it would really decrease the traffic that's going in. Um, the lack of provenance of that 40% chunk of our large storage room. Um, we do have duplicates, triplicates, and worse, of some photographs that were originally collected by the Huron Institute. So we're gonna be looking at deaccessioning some of those and identifying some of those artifacts right away that we can set aside and, and get to work on that. And the, the fact that most objects cannot be physically retrieved without moving many other items. So that is what we are after in the next, uh, the next year or so. Thank you.